beginning with the 11th verse of the 19th chapter of the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ, John said, Now I saw heaven open. Now this is similar to what he said in the first verse of chapter 4 when John said, I saw heaven open and I stood before the throne of God. That's what happened in the, at the rapture. The rapture takes place in the fourth chapter of Revelation. Well, now John sees heaven open one more time. I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except he himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron he himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of almighty God and he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written king of kings and lord of of Lords. Father, anoint your servant today. Anoint me with Holy Ghost anointing. Anoint me to preach. Anoint me, Lord, to speak your word into the hearts of believers today. God, cause us to be seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Lord, that your word would find place within every heart, that it would take root and grow. We give you praise and glory and honor that we would bear much fruit for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Today I want to speak to you on the subject entitled, The King is coming how many of you know the king is coming how many of you know it's not going to be long until the king will be coming the king of kings and the lord of lords as we have entered into this study in the book of the revelation of Christ, I want to remind you of some things. I want to first of all remind you that death stands at the door and death can take place at any time. The Bible says only a fool puts his trust in tomorrow. The Bible does not tell us that our years are numbered. But the Bible says our days are numbered. The Bible tells us in James that it is appointed unto men once to die. And after this is the judgment. Death is real. Death is at the door. It can take place at any time. The second thing I want to remind you of is that Jesus can show up at any time. Amen. At any moment, He can rapture His church and take every born-again believer out of this world and take them to heaven. And it can happen at any moment. And what I keep saying to you over and over again is, we must be ready. We must be ready. The third thing I want to remind you of is that salvation 
is available to everyone now today. It's available. God has made it available. Jesus has made salvation available to every man, woman, boy, and girl through faith in the spilled blood of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. The fourth thing I want to remind you of this morning is that only those people who are born again Only those people who have been washed in the blood of Jesus will go to heaven. It's not automatic. It doesn't happen to people just because they're good. It doesn't happen to people just because they're generous. It doesn't happen to people just because they have good thoughts, good ideas, or good motives. The only people that are going to heaven are those who have been washed in the the blood of Jesus. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. And so can you imagine this morning what this world is going to look like after the church and after every Christian is taken from this earth? Can you imagine? Can you imagine the chaos, the turmoil, the absolute terror that will literally engulf the populated areas of this earth when Antichrist begins his rise to power. What we have learned in this series, in the book of the Revelation of Christ, is that after the rapture, there is going to be seven years of tribulation that will flood this earth like the waters of Noah's flood. Amen. When every born-again believer is taken away from this earth, the Bible says now, he, when he that, has, he that lets hath been taken away, and that's talking about the church, then the wicked will appear. Wickedness is going to appear on this earth the moment the church is taken away. The only thing that is holding back the tide of tribulation is the church and God's people. But when the church is gone, when the influence and the power and the prayers of the church leaves this earth, and the only thing that is left is every unregenerate person. How do you think this world is going to look? I want you to listen to the description of mankind before the flood. Way back in Genesis chapter 6, in verses 5 and 6, the Bible says, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent, of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Think about that. And the Lord, the Bible says, was sorry that he created man on this earth. And he was grieved in his heart. After the resurrection and the rapture of the church, this earth is going to revert back to the way it was before the days of Noah. When every man had in his heart nothing but wickedness continually. Even Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 37, But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. In other words, just before Jesus comes the second time, the earth is going to be filled with violence and wickedness and horror and terror. But instead of the earth being flooded with water like it was in Noah's day, the earth is going to be flooded with sin and iniquity and every kind of perversion and unmitigated terror and horror as an unchecked, unbridled, uncontrollable flood of unrestricted demonic 
evil and satanic influence is going to sweep across this earth. I want you to think about the way it's going to be. Don't miss the rapture. Don't be left behind. Amen. But in heaven, hallelujah. Somebody say it. But in heaven, in heaven there's going to be peace. On this earth, it's turmoil, horror, pain, suffering, wars all over. But in heaven, there is going to be joy and peace that will culminate with the celebration of the marriage supper of the Lamb that we talked about last week. We're going to the marriage supper of the Lamb. We're going to be celebrating that great banquet before God. We're going to be in heaven rejoicing, feasting on the goodness of God. Hallelujah. And all of God's saints, every Old Testament saint, all of the New Testament saints that have ever lived, all of the tribulation saints that are born again during the tribulation, we will be forever with God and with Jesus Christ our Savior forever and ever and ever and ever. That's where I want to be, saints of God. I want to be in heaven. I don't want to be on this earth. And so the Bible tells us that right after the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's the last event that takes place in heaven just before Jesus comes back to this earth. The second coming of Christ is the chief theme of revelation. That's what it is all pointing to. It's pointing to the fact that Jesus is going to come back to this earth he is going to come back with all of His saints. And He is going to set up His kingdom on this earth. The second coming of Christ will bring human history as we know it to a close. Everything is going to change. Never will there be a more glorious event or a more beautiful sight. I want you to think about it, saints. This beautiful spectacle the armies of heaven the Bible says that Jesus is going to be riding on a white horse that all of the saints of God and all the angels in heaven are going to be riding on white horses I want you to imagine the beauty of that event as everybody is clothed in pure white And this army, or these armies, are coming back to take vengeance upon the enemies of God. The second coming of Christ will be the most fearful thing that mankind has ever had to face on this earth. While we are celebrating the marriage supper of the Lamb, in heaven while that's taking place in heaven on the earth Antichrist will be gathering his army along with the armies of many nations around the world and they are all going to surround Israel they are gathered there to fight against Christ the word they are gathered there at what we know as Armageddon. This word, Armageddon, occurs only one time in Scripture, and it's Revelation chapter 19. It is the name of the place where the greatest battle of all time is going to be fought. The battle itself has been mentioned time and time and time again throughout the, the Bible. The word Armageddon comes from two Hebrew words. The first word is Har, H-A-R. 
It means mountain. Mountain. And the word Megiddo. And that word means rendezvous. A mountain rendezvous. You put those two words together, and it means the mountain of the gathering. I've stood on the mountain there at Megiddo. I've looked out over that great, vast valley where the last war on earth is going to be fought. The battle of Armageddon is going to cover a total area of 20,000 square miles. That great valley of Megiddo. The armies against God are going to gather there in that valley. They're there to destroy Israel and fight against God. These armies have gathered there to make war against Jesus. That's what the Scripture says. There they will await the return of Jesus Christ. Who is expected. They're expecting Him. They know He's coming back. Listen. Do you think the devil doesn't realize that after seven years of tribulation, Jesus is coming back? It's been prophesied in the Word of God many, many times. The Bible says the demons believe and they tremble before God. They know the event is going to happen. They know that Jesus said that Antichrist is going to reign for 1,260 days for three and a half years. They know that Jesus is coming back and that He is going to stand upon the Mount of Olives to deliver Israel from Antichrist. They already know that. The devil knows, according to Revelation chapter 12, he knows that he has but a short time on this earth. And it will be common knowledge to Antichrist and others that Christ is expected to return. They gather there and they're waiting as they fight against the city of Jerusalem. They overtake half of that city. But before they can totally conquer the city of Jerusalem, Jesus and all of His saints and all of His angels are going to return to this earth and He is going to fight against Antichrist and all of those armies of the nations. And the result of Armageddon will be that there will be a total defeat of all the armies of the earth. And the spirit forces of Satan are going to be destroyed. All the vast armies of the nations will be destroyed. They will have gathered to fight against Jesus. But the Bible says, John said, I saw a mighty angel. And he took Antichrist, that old dragon, and the beast, and he cast them alive into the lake of fire to be tormented forever and ever and ever. The Bible says that a, that a sword will come out of Jesus' mouth. A flaming sword, which is the Word of God. And He will destroy all the armies of the earth. And the Bible says throughout that great valley of Megiddo that the blood, there's going to be a river of blood from the deceased those that have been killed by Jesus Himself, that is going to flow up to the horse's bridle for 184 miles. A river of blood. Let me tell you something. God has been long-suffering with mankind. But now God's patience has come to an end. This is the war that will usher in the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. This is the war that Jesus Christ will be involved in. 
This is the war where mankind will see Jesus the Lord in a way that they have never seen Jesus before. Look at verses 12 and 13. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with the vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. They are going to see him. The Scripture says every eye shall behold Him. He's not going to come as an invisible force. He is going to come as the, the, the Son of God with all power and authority to destroy every wicked, evil person in this world. Somebody say amen. No wonder the Bible says that men will run and hide. No wonder the Bible sin tells us that men's hearts will literally fail them because of fear. The Lord has not come, listen to me, to stand on a hillside with outstretched arms to a lost people crying out, come to me, come to me. This time He will not come like that. The next time Jesus comes, He will not come as a crucified lamb hanging on a cross, bleeding and dying. But He has come, and He has come to make war against the inhabitants of the earth. And this is the purpose of His second coming. Look at verse 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed Him upon white horses, clothed in Fine linen, white and clean. I want you to notice the word armies. There's not just one army that's coming back with Jesus. But there are armies. First of all, it's going to be the armies of all the saints of God in heaven clothed in spotless white. In Jude, chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. Behold, The Lord is coming with ten thousands of His saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against Him. There's also going to be the army of angels. A multitude of angels that no one can count. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 and 9. Listen to me, saints. It says, When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with His mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. But even though the Lord is coming back with armies, armies of saints and of angels, this is not how He's going to defeat the enemy. When Jesus comes back at His second coming, He's not coming back as a helpless baby in a manger. He is not coming back at His second coming to allow evil men to nail Him to the cross. He is coming back at His second coming to make war against those who rejected His love and His forgiveness. And when He returns to make war on the inhabitants of the earth, He will not use His vast army. The Bible says all He will need to do is speak the word and they will be destroyed. The Bible says He is going to destroy them with a sword that comes out of His mouth. Verse 15, Now out of His mouth, goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike 
the nations. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. To defeat the armies of this world, he's not going to need a nuclear weapon. He's not going to need the weapons, any weapons of mankind. He's going to do it with the words out of his mouth. He is going to speak their destruction and they will be destroyed immediately. But I want you to notice that He wants those that have rejected Him to know who He is. Verse 16, And He has on His vesture and on His robe across His thigh are written the words, King of kings and Lord of lords. He's coming back to this earth, saints of God. He's coming back with vengeance. He's coming back to this earth to make war. And He is going to set up His kingdom upon this earth. And He is going to reign forever and ever and ever and ever. World without end. Hallelujah. Give Him praise. Today, Men strut around like they are gods. Today, people act like they have no fear of anything. They act like they're their own man and their own women, woman and they can do anything they want to do. But look what God is going to do with these people. These people who rejected Him. These people who with pride thought they were going to be able to do whatever they wanted to do and reject God and reject His Word and reject His Christ. But I want to tell you, saints of God, God is going to deal with rebellion. He is going to deal with sin. And He is going to do it with authority and power and destruction. I want you to very quickly, as I come to a close, look at verses 17 through 21. I saw an angel, John said, standing in the sun. And he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, Come, come and gather together for the supper of the great God. God's going to provide. He's provided for His wife in heaven a supper, a banquet, but He's also going to provide a supper on earth. And the supper that He's going to provide is going to be a supper for all the fowls of the air. And the Bible says that they are going, He is going to call all the birds of the earth together. And they are going to have a great feast called the Great Supper of God. And I saw the beast And the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. And then the beast was captured. And with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the rest were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. And all the birds were filled with their flesh. The Bible says they are going to feast on the flesh of men in the valley of Megiddo for seven years. The nation of Israel is going to be once and for all delivered and vindicated from all its enemies. All those that presently surround Israel today and call for their destruction and say that they have no right 
to survive. Let me tell you something. God is going to come back to this earth. Jesus is going to destroy all of those around Israel that fight against Israel and fight against God and call for the destruction of Israel. Israel, once and for all, will be vindicated as God's people. Would you give God's praise and glory and honor? They are all going to be destroyed. And God's eternal kingdom is going to be set up on this earth. And He is going to reign forever and ever and ever. Saints, I want to tell you something. What I have told you today is true. It's not a fairy tale. It's not just something somebody wrote in a book so we would live better lives. I'm telling you that what God has said in this book is true. And it's going to happen just exactly the way He said it was going to happen. Would you stand with me this morning? Saints, I'm not telling you something you don't know. All you have to do is open your eyes and look around you. All you have to do is turn on your television and watch the news. And it won't take you very long to make you realize we are living in the last days.